Hello and welcome to November 30th edition of the Chaos Weekly Community Chat. We have um, all of these wonderful people here today. Thank you so much for being here. And there's Daniel coming in right at the beginning. Here you go, Daniel. There's the minutes. Um, yeah, I hope everybody's doing good. I hope everybody had a nice break last week. Um, we are back for a couple more weeks. Um, and that's actually the first item on our agenda. So let me just share this. Uh, so um, the first item is just to kind of go over the holiday schedule and make sure everybody knows what's happening. Um, no meetings December 10th through the 10th of January, um, at least regarding the working groups, our community meeting, and then the chaos office hours as well. Um, the app ecosystem group is also um, off now until January 10th. And then the DEI badging folks are coming back a little bit early because they have a lot to do, or so I'm told from Matt Cantu. So that's why they're coming back a week early. Um, but everybody else, yeah. uh, hi, Sophia, how are you? Okay. Good. Can somebody drop the minutes in there for her if they haven't already? I don't have my chat open here. I have my chat open. There we go. Probably you'll get multiple now. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so yeah, so does anybody have any questions about this crazy schedule that we have? Reading between the lines, I think we're taking the general holiday season off. That about sums it up, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was to summarize it in one sentence. Yes, this just don't show up for like a month, it's fine. Um, I, I personally plan on just kind of hanging around Slack so if you know people do pop in, that's totally fine. If you happen to show up for a meeting, nobody's around, but you have something to say, feel free to drop it in Slack. I don't know if a lot of people are gonna be around, but I'll probably be around. So um, if you do have questions, just pop them in there. No worries at all. Or you can email me, totally fine. All are, right. are you gonna do the chaos weekly or that also take that off? Maybe you can do just like one at the beginning. It's like happy holidays, bye. See you in January. Oh, the newsletter. <laughs> yeah. Or, yeah, that, yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Yeah, I was not gonna do that. Yeah, I was absolutely okay. gonna not have that out. Yeah, but I um, know. yeah, I was gonna oh, do yeah. like next week, and then maybe the week after, just to sum mm -hmm. up what happened, if anything. And just like, um, see you later. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Unless something like amazing happens and that is newsworthy. Then, uh, yeah. So, okay, cool. I guess we're good. All right, number two, new board member elections. I don't know if Matt or Sean, Matt, do you want to mention this or I can't, doesn't matter? York sent an email out, but I guess he's on his sojourn to not being here. <laughs> Well, I mean, we have two new board members, so congratulations to Sophia. Yay, Sophia. <laughs> and also Yahui, uh, who will be joining the board as well. So yay to Yahui. I think it's in the middle of the night in China right now, so. It is. So we will see him. He's on the, we have the Asia Pacific call tomorrow morning, yep. Uh, yep. US Central. And then uh, Sean. Goggins is the new co-director with Nicole. So congratulations to Sean. Yay. Yeah. Sean, you now have to I go will. to every single meeting. I know. I will be there for the community. <laughs> My devotion congrats, to, Sean. Congrats, Sophia. My devotion to service is not wavering. So congratulations to everybody. Uh, Sophia, you probably just saw, I just added you to the board list. You may have seen that come across your, okay, yeah. your thing. Okay. I just use your, I don't know if that's the email you want to use. So if you want me to change it, just let me know. Or if it's fine. Uh, yeah, I tend to put my work and my personal email and everything just so I don't miss it. <laughs> okay. Just, I know some people separate them and all that kind of stuff and just making sure I'm getting it to the right spot. So uh, great. Thank you. Thank you to the board members, the outgoing board members. Uh, could we could we list them as well? Oh, yeah. So let's see our outgoing board members. Let's see. Oh, hi, Sala. 
Uh, Ray, so Ray is an outgoing board member. Ray, thank you very much. Giving you a clap, Ray. Thank Yay, you, Ray. Ray. Thank you, Ray. Thank you. <laughs> it's, it's, it's been fun. So, but I'll still be around, unfortunately, for the rest of you on the call. <laughs> it's very fortunate for all of us. So thank you, Ray. And then Andrea Gallo is also an outgoing board member. So thanks to Andrea as well. So thank you, Ray. And Andrea. For the uh, the new board members, can I get a uh, a picture to put on the website? Yes, I have that as a to do. Okay. Um, what format? I saw it come through as a add it to this pull request, but for sharing an image, if I don't have like a link to it, I can just send it as an attachment to an email. Yeah, you, you can just informally send it to me if you want. And this is Kevin talking because I'm not in the app right now. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> I think I know your voice by now, but it's more, um, I'm on my work machine, so the experience of Zoom is not as ideal. Kevin, do you get bios as well? Don't we have like a little right? Yes, yes, we do need a we do need a bio as well. Uh, one to one to two paragraph bio. Anything specific you want in there, or just like the general run of the mill? Uh, yeah, it's it's the pretty standard pretty standard bios. I suppose if you if you would like to see what they look like, you could you could go to the the board member page on the website and see what other people have done. However, there is some, uh, there is kind of, there's some differentiation in the way people write them. So. Okay. Basically, whatever you would like to tell us. Anybody have, have any questions or comments? All right. Well, thank you to everyone. Congratulations, Sophia Yahoy and Sean. And yeah, look forward to having you around for longer. Okay. Um, I see number three says board foundation support. And I'm guessing that you put that on there. So I will yep. turn it over to him. Yep. So that is, um, so for those of you, if you remember, we did kind of a, a DEI audit for the chaos project. And there were a series of recommendations that came um, from that audit. So not to go through those again, but the Ford Foundation uh, was the original supporter for that audit, just kind of our own self-reflection. Um, and they are going to continue support for us for the next two years to, I think, yeah, do a couple of things. One is the hope is, is that the, the members that we had to help us do the audit would continue to stay on uh, with the project that we have and uh, actually help with some of the implementation of those recommendations. So the original was kind of a shorter term, just kind of what, what are people's reflection and how could we improve with no implementation expectation from that original work. And over the next two years, to start making some of these implementations. We've been making a number of these implementations. So for example, things like office hours were, came out of that recommendation. Uh, translations came out of that recommendation. So we're clearly like doing things, but I think there's still a lot more to do. Uh, and then over the course of the next two years, I think uh, Ford would love to see not only us make these implementations within the chaos project, but think about how we can help other communities who want to better center DEI within their own community work do just that. So we, we have to think about how, like we had the opportunity to be supported by the Ford Foundation to, to do this work. And obviously not every community has that support. So how we think about the recommendations that we received for ourselves and how those might be translated uh, to help others that are interested in doing something similar. So that's the, the next two years. So if anybody has comments or thoughts or would like to participate in that, um, don't hesitate to let me know or Elizabeth yeah. or Sean or whomever. Uh, can oh. we publish somewhere those recommendations? Uh, as uh, a... Yeah, I think we we have. I don't know if we've done it here. I think we've done it in the DEI working group. Elizabeth, correct me if I'm wrong. I think we've talked pretty openly about them. Yeah, we didn't really formally well. document 
them like in a blog post or something public like on yeah, that scale yeah. but we should yeah um yeah yeah the current the current the first one's currently ending right now so we're just kind of putting we're just kind of wrapping that up and the second one will start and i like that idea of maybe putting together a blog post elizabeth yeah just over like whatever during this break period or whatever it could be short too right like here, here are the recommendations that came out um with just small small descriptions of what those recommendations are i like that idea do we need to add the ford foundation to the website as a project sponsor um or funder yeah i mean probably so i think that makes sense let me i'll ask uh michael if that's okay before we go ahead and do that okay currently on the uh main page of the website at the bottom of the page we we list our funders uh, the two mm -hmm. we have are the alfred p sloan foundation uh and sustain uh funds mm -hmm. our podcast so yeah if anything is missing there please let me know Does anybody have any other questions or comments about this? Uh, I actually have a question, Matt. We should maybe also um, acknowledge the people who are on that team because I don't think we've really done that. Is that a, no? Do you I think, think we've okay? just done it kind of verbally, like again. Yeah. In these meetings. yeah. I think we created a Slack channel for it. For it. Uh, signal. Our signal. There's so many messaging yeah. tools, I don't even know which ones. Too many. Okay. Good. Cool. All right. Um, okay, so the next item on our agenda is goals for 2022. I'm guessing that's another Matt G. Yeah, that was me. Oh. I just. Oh, go ahead. Was there somebody else that had something? Go ahead. Um, so, I mean, there are a couple of things that I'm really hoping to accomplish in the next year. Um, so, for example, I'd like to, you know, complete a review of released metrics. Things like that, right? Like, that would be great to, to kind of um to if not finish in 2022 <laughs> like at least make really good progress in 2022 uh another could be like what i had just mentioned was with the implementation of the dei recommendations you know uh, matt i wonder about what are you thinking um what your thoughts are in the review of released metrics like what would we be reviewing so the review is um so a lot of the metrics are sometimes maybe two or three years old and uh just rereading them i think we've learned things in those two or three years and so for example the objectives might be slightly different or um, implementation approaches might be slightly different and so just asking the working groups to take a look at metrics that they released a long time ago, like two or three years ago, um, and making any editorial changes that they think help express the metric a little bit better. That makes good sense. I'm on a, another project where we're doing a review and update and finding a lot of stuff that kind of oh my gosh. got broken by I, ignoring. I think I mentioned this maybe in a different meeting, but we in in the dei working group we 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 decided to to review the code of conduct for a project right so that that's a metric and we thought it would be like a we thought it was pretty straightforward we thought <laughs> like the whole thing was changed <laughs> i swear to god yeah like there was so much that that changed um so it really opened my eyes as to how much changes yeah. in just a couple of years one uh, one part of this review process that I think is really important is uh, consistency in the language we use. So over the over the few years that we've uh, we've been doing this, our 
our understanding and even just the our understanding of these metrics have changed uh, and even the way we, we talk about these metrics has changed for for example you know pull requests have five or six different names and if we go back and we we look we look through all the uh the previous metrics releases you'll you'll see those different you'll you'll see those different names right so uh the preferred term for us is change requests uh, so when we're when we're doing these reviews we i think we we need to make sure that we align these terms with our with our preferred language and and additionally uh link to the those terms where they've been defined so if, if a change request is mentioned it should really have a link that that links to the, the change request metric. Uh, things like that, I, I believe, are important. I agree that would be valuable. As a user, I found that uh, confusing until I figured it out. OK. Um, so I, you know, are there, oh, are there Sal, I see your hand up, too. Sala? Uh, yeah, yeah. I was, uh, was just making sure it was my turn. Um, so, so I think I think terms that that seem to uh, acquire different flavors uh, fit very nicely in a glossary uh, terminology. You know, also known as, and then uh, you don't have to have the definition. Just you know, those terms can all mean the same thing, and then you just put them in a an ordered list, uh, an unordered list, and um, I, I think having that document means that even if somebody's looking at a legacy version of any document um, that is not updated because it was the old version, um, they would still be able to understand the context as opposed to just making the edits and, and hoping that nobody's reading the outdated version. Um, that's just the one added to that. Thank you. So I, I will say, so we've we've discussed creating a glossary before. Um, the, the problem with creating a glossary uh, is that it's it's another document that needs to be maintained. Uh, so our our metrics release is is kind of our is that default is that is that glossary right? So those are the those are the terms that we've defined. Uh, so, so creating a separate glossary that would include those terms just uh, it adds a point of uh, redundancy or possible uh, uh, failure. Yeah, so, uh, just to elaborate, um, you don't have to redundantly define the terms. Think of it more as an as an index that just says under this umbrella, those terms are all sometimes meaning the same thing. So you use just the current term as the uh, parent, and then under it, what other terms had been used previously. Um, you don't have to necessarily um, have it uh, like a full glossary definition um, terminology section. You know, it, it doesn't have to to be verbosely redefining the same meaning. Just what other words may or may not have been used um, to refer to that same thing. Um, so it's kind of like the index at the end of a book, right? Um, anyways, so, so um, you know, it, it would take maintenance effort, of course, uh, but it just also has the benefit that if you do use those terms, or if you are trying to use the right term and you can look it up under the glossary and then you would know you're using the right term. Um, so, so it, it's not meant to really be redundant. Uh, it just tries to keep everything under under one document, um, so that redundancy and, and edits don't keep happening over time. And I, I would say I'm, I'm not a, I'm not opposed to it. The the maintenance is what has me worried. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Uh, Kevin, I, I appreciate the, the wisdom of your point. I, th I think that um, as the number of metrics proliferates, this kind of maintenance and um, uh, uh, linking, uh, but, but the burden of this maintenance goes up.
<laughs> which uh, I should say is a is a basically a thought that fewer metrics may mean better metrics. But I think this is a good question. Uh, I apologize. Hold on. Sean has had his hand up for a little while. So Matt, do you have yeah. a my, new idea or my idea is a segue from what we've been talking about. So if Matt's if Matt, if you're okay, if your thoughts are aligned with the discussion as it's been going, go ahead. I was just going to say that I, in the whole time working with the cash project so far, I did not know we had terms to find anywhere. I thought we were just going off of what people knew so far about what the content of the metrics were. Um, I'm, I'm just, I, I think it would, I think maybe in the handbook, just have a, if it was even like 10 definitions, like best practices, pull requests, things like that, that would be easier to onboard people. Um, that I'm definitely for that. Okay, thanks, Matt. Um, Sean or Bernard, do you have a comment? Yes, I have one comment, like this discussion of having a list of uh, terms or uh, metrics is coming off and on again. I was thinking of one solution for this is like creating a separate GitHub page as far as maintenance of that is concerned, we can add one uh, checklist in the release of metric where we can have just a chat list that we, we are adding it to this list. So in this way, we will have a list of a, a glossary and also uh, it will be taken care of while we are releasing the metric and following the checklist. So it'll be one added item to the checklist, but I think it is helpful because it has been coming again and again for the discussion. So, okay, so thank you for these comments. We're getting, I think, down into the details of how this might actually be implemented, which would be the goal of 2022. <laughs> so, um, so this would, so I think maybe the, the highest level thing is, is just kind of the, this completing the review of the metrics and then within that uh, creating consistency around some of the terms and how that gets sorted out. Um, would be in the details, I think, that are coming up here. So thank you for that. Um, Sean, did you have a, a comment? For... Yeah, I, I just wanted to say in 2022, I would like to work closely with uh, the two software projects that are part of Chaos to work on developing a shared community of contribution for implementing the metrics. So in the past, I know I've done Augur, focused uh, tutorials uh, working to build a community and I, I think you know I of course need to talk to Daniel and Georg about how the more lab would, would like this piece. but I'd like to have a, a chaos community for welcoming software developers to implement metrics and the tools that we have I think, I think there's a an opportunity for the two major tools in the project to collaborate on community development in some way that isn't specified yet, because I think that mm -hmm. first involves a conversation between us. Cool. Um, Daniel put in the chat, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so I'll, pro I think I'll probably a... send an email to Georg and Daniel to try to set something up for, given Georg's schedule, probably early next year, like the week of January 10th, which is when I think the chaos world reboots mm -hmm. okay. with our new operating system. So the so the intention here is to just the to overcome what um like just to overcome what may be a, a lack of community development around say Augur yeah or, I or think yeah and well, try to build that out yeah yeah I think I think it requires different practices than the metrics development. Part. Okay, and, and I don't see it as necessarily independent, but I, I think there are ways that we can uh, start to develop the developer community, and I think that will help to advance and secure the role of chaos going forward. Right on. Cool. I think that'd be great. I totally agree. Uh, all right. I had put a couple of others on there. Perhaps reflection on the website. It has, as we know, gotten kind of big. Um, clearly, the metrics models are gaining traction. So, 
working on the release of metrics models would be something that I have uh, as well. Are there, are there other things that people would like to accomplish in 2022, like personally? These can be like very just like you care about this thing. This doesn't have to be a concern that you think everybody has, just something that you'd like to carry forward. Yeah, Sala. Um, so I'm, I'm like um, a very, very big user of dark mode. Um, and I don't know if uh, the chaos site and resources have yet, you know, uh, gotten into the responding to the environments dark mode setting or not. Um, so I'm, I'm just putting it as an idea. I wish I could do it. Um, I really can't, but I would love to see, um, you know, if there's a way to integrate um, responsive dark mode or, you know, um, system dependent dark mode. Uh, which is part of the CSS specifications um, on, on the chaos resources. I am not familiar with this, so, um, but I am willing to learn <laughs> and become familiar with this. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, so just to summarize very quickly, um, when you switch dark mode. Um, you know, some people do it because they're sensitive to having a lot of um, um, white light coming from the screen, um, mm -hmm. as a background color, and so they they specify in the OS as if you know they want dark mode. And then they go on a website um, that doesn't implement that, um, and of course that that shock itself is is what gets people who use it for accessibility purposes. Um, gotcha. So is it about kind of did I just put like in across the different chaos channels, thinking how things look in uh, dark yes. mode? Yeah, so on the website, for instance, you would define two color palettes. I gotcha. The dark mode, okay. the dark mode, and then you pick up the setting. Um, gotcha, gotcha. And, yeah. Okay. Um, okay, no, that makes sense. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, Daniel. What's on your yeah. mind? Yeah, a uh, couple of comments. Uh, so plus one to what Sean uh, mentioned before, definitely. Um, and perhaps I'll align with this. Um, but uh, what I'd like to think as a community is how we can make ourselves uh, sustainable in the medium term, because we are all like, a, let's say, small, uh, entities or contributors and we each of us depends heavily on on different things but probably if one of us is missing in the in the playground then the community may face certain issues right so how can we be more resilient to any advances there, there might be certain ideas about bringing uh, probably a large corporation or so sustaining the community in somehow or helping advance or you know this kind of things but uh I, I would say this discussion is good to have. I, I, for instance, have had a couple of informal conversations with you, Matt, for instance, about this topic, but that's something that probably uh, to have with, with all of us here. Um, it doesn't, so it's kind of extending the, what, what Sean was mentioning, but to, to, to everyone, to, to the software projects, to the community itself, to the goals that we are having together. Um, so that's one thing. And, and, Kind of related to this is about the branding discussion that I, I mentioned in the past. I think that's an important topic for 2022. Um, but this, this had been already mentioned, so that's something probably to discuss about or to, to move things forward. I personally, uh, uh, I personally would like to, to to move this on in some house, so that's something I can I can try to help with. And the other is something that we have started in the past, but which is interactions or engagements with other communities. So I think that would be awesome to have to see. That was the that was the engagement with other communities is different than the brand, right? Or is that kind of it's kind of tied up in it? Yeah, it's it's so having having the right branding proposition and, and gotcha. defining the engagement that we are expecting from others, then it's kind of driving the that engagement afterwards. But gotcha. those are two different things, right? Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Um yeah, thank you for that. 
Yeah. And hopefully, like with without assigning like action items on this list, like hopefully people are looking at this list and thinking that's something that I'm interested in. <laughs> like I would like to be part of that conversation, whatever it might be. Um, and I, I know looking at this list myself, and like I don't think any of these things on the list are solo considerations. I think we've heard these before, so it'd be great to to start uh, kind of taking these on. Um, I had another thought. I really like the sustainability considerations for the project. Um, I think that's important for us moving forward, so that's great. Uh, anybody else have thoughts about, oh, I know what my other thought was, about what they would like to see? like more community members on the call, like more people in the working groups, fewer weekly meetings, like it could be anything. It could be, it just absolutely anything. Like there's there's too much of this or too little of that. You know, I think we have a really good group of people that is pretty responsive to, to the needs of everybody. So is there anything that people have on their mind? You already talked about metrics models, but I know in the past we had also that concept had come up because of the growing list of metrics that we have. And so sort of thinking about the ability for someone new to the project to come in and to browse and get to get to know what we're working on, to get to know what's applicable to them. It's just it's only to get longer and more untenable. Um, and so I know in the past we had talked about whether or not that means reconfiguring how we display things, how we group things, maybe not shipping our org chart per se in terms of how things are grouped, but maybe trying to find another organizational principle that could be more aligned to say someone who's new to the project who doesn't necessarily understand the, the nuances and splits between the different working groups. Um, I think it's part of the metrics model piece, honestly, because I think that's, that's sort of the path we took um, at the time versus saying like, we're going to redo how we organize our entire website. <laughs> um, but I, I think, I don't know, I guess for me, the, the goal is to make our, I guess our virtual presence more digestible um, for someone who would be new, newer to the project or newer to a Netflix initiative, um, such that they could either, either that might be through the metrics models, but it might also be through some I, mean, I think a lot of these concepts we really brought up today could could inform that, like the, the glossary or consistent language across things, how we organize it, how we present it. Um, so I think it, that's kind of a, a nebulous goal, but um, just thinking about simplifying that experience for either new contributors or new users of our project. Yeah, I, I agree. A, a glossary is a really good idea because one of the things we've created is our own language. And, and for a newcomer, that language can be overwhelming, just like it is for anybody that's like, I don't know, if I was to walk into an oncologist's office and try to explain or understand what they're talking about, I'd have a hard time. I, they'd have to break it down for me in simple terms. I don't know if that's a good or bad example. I, I think entering any open source project like the OSSF, I've, I've started participating in a couple of their meetings, and they speak a completely different language. So I think a glossary would be really helpful, plus one. So to that, to these, to these points, one of the things that's kind of interesting, if you take a look at this list is like, um, it's not about like making more metrics or building out the software. You know what I mean? Like that seems to be going pretty well, at least what we're, what we're doing. A lot of these are about, at least to me, like, like engagement and new new individuals and how we express the work that we've done. Um, so at least to me, that's kind of interesting. Like it's not about building more metrics, which will, I think, continue to happen. Um, I uh, or like to other, to, yeah. Go ahead. Um, to, to that point, to, to build on that, um, one of the things that I was going to say here uh, that I think maybe has been said in in other forms as well um, is uh, broadening the uh, diversity of events that we award badges to. And I don't know mm -hmm. if it's 
here or, or not. Um, I, but I, it seems like right now we've got, you know, gosh, hats off uh, to Matt uh, Cantu um, and, and team, uh, you know, just between the time of our board meeting and the time of the podcast, the end of your podcast, you know, it just, um, you know, that initiative has really seemed to, uh, to take off. Um, it seems like, and hopefully I'm not misspeaking here, it seems like most uh, of the um, badges have been awarded uh, to Linux Foundation events. Um, uh, it, it would be great to see um, us uh, broaden that. Um, uh, and as I'm saying this, I'm going, oh, I've got to reach out to this person and this person and this person. Um, uh, and, and I think then, Matt, to bring it back to what you were saying in terms of engagement, I think maybe what that might also do uh, is as folks start to see, if we start to broaden that, what folks might also start to see is, oh, wow, this event has a has a badge associated with it. Oh, well, I wonder what that is. And if the badge is clickable in some way or if there's right, um, oh, I, I want to go find out about that. What is that? And it may then may draw folks, uh, new folks into uh, the, the project or so, um, you know, and, and we may start to see other folks getting uh, involved as well and, and engaging. Yeah, um, so plus one to all of that. Um, I, I've noticed the same thing. We've talked about it a little bit in the uh, badging weekly meetings. And um, our conclusion was that when we first started and we were reaching out to a bunch of different event organizing teams, we were getting a pretty diverse set of um, like different kinds of events that we're applying. And we've got that kind of peppered in now, but a lot of them are from the Linux Foundation. Yeah, the applications coming in and um, they're at the point where they know what they're doing with the applications and they know how to, um, how to make their event um, fit the best practices that we provide. Um, so it, it would be great to have more of that um, learning experience with events that, um, that aren't in the Linux Foundation, I agree. Um, so that's one of our big goals for the next release. And also bringing up the badge, the, the type of badge that we provide, we've always kind of leaned towards maybe we should change the badge and make it something different. I think that's gonna be another focus for this next release. Glad to have you around, Nicole. You have great feedback on the badge. Oh, thank you. Thank you. No, I just, I think it's, a, a, I, I love the initiative and I love being a part of that. Um, yeah, no, it, it's been a, a absolutely amazing. I, I think so. Thank you. Is there, so I have two questions on this for either Nicole or Matt. Um, and one maybe doesn't need to be answered now, but could be kind of consideration for 2022 actually both could be the first one is about academic events so they're not i know one of the criteria for the chaos badge is that it's an oss it's an open source event and so one possibility would be to uh, include academic events as well because they certainly um, are focused on better centering dei within their own events as well so just be something to think about. Um, and then is there any, I think one of the things that might be worth considering in 2022 is how do projects get badged? If that's even a possibility. So we had talked about event badging and project badging when this all started, maybe like a year and a half ago. And we took the approach that event badging was probably the more approachable thing to look at first. Um, it was a they were they were time cap. You know what I mean? Like there was a there was this time component, and you didn't have to rebadge and all that kind of stuff. Um, so is is there a model for project badging, and if so, what could or might that look like? Um, obviously being sensitive to the amount of work that goes into to, to awarding a badge so 
So Frida, really, did you have a comment? Yeah, I was just thinking, it, for me, that's really going to be boundary dependent. So you mentioned the time component in an event and time. It's these are the people that are participating in the event where participation in a project is ebbs and flows. So yeah. it could be participation over the course of a year. Like we'd have we'd have to bound it in some way. Um, and then it would also have to have an expiration date on it. <laughs> so, I, I, I mean, I think it's possible. It's just like, I think we'd have to change our criteria of it in terms of how to set boundaries that are applicable for that project. I mean, it depends, maybe a year isn't the right time scale. I've been working with a, a project that has a, a release cadence of 18 months. And so that's a more appropriate time period to look at participation levels because some people are pretty much only involved in the release portion. So if you look at the other like 14 months of the year, they're not doing anything. <laughs> so depending on how like how you bound it, it's going to be a little bit more subjective. Sala, do you have a comment as well? Uh, yeah, so um, I, I heard we were talking about some who applied for badges have expertise, experience. Um, they've had questions answered. Um, and so, uh, you know, I'm thinking, okay, somebody who's meaning to apply for a badge can lean on that resource. So what if we have a repo for, you know, everyone who's applied and had a badge? Um, would be on this repo and people can open an issue there asking a question, which gives um, the ability for those who have badges, you know, experience with it um, and uh, those in the project. Um, so it's more like a, like a forum, right? But we're just doing it the open source approach. Um, so there would be that repo where it's like, am I doing this right? Um, um, just so that we can lean on the experience of people who got it done from the user's experience and user's experience as opposed to from the project's experience. A good idea. Thanks. Um, Matt and then Lucas. Uh, yeah, sorry for the dogs barking in the back when we have roofing people, but um, so we have. Um, I think that's a great idea, Sala, and I'm glad to um, I'm glad to set that up and have some kind of prototype built before we come back in January. Um, I can take an action item to do that, but also um, I think the as, as far as connecting connecting people, we have a few people who are kind of senior appliers at this point, and I think it'd be great to reach out to them and ask if they're willing to to be part of that and, and say, um, like there's no reward, there's no monetary reward or anything, but it'd be like passing down what you know about how to apply so far and, and reach out if you have any questions of this. Cool. Um, Lucas, your hand is down. I don't know if your comment <laughs> went away or. <laughs> thank you, but thank you for observing that. Uh, I want to um, call out how many ideas and how much passion there is related to DEI. Uh, and I certainly share that. Um, for example, um, I wonder about expanding um, the DEI work outside of open source entirely. Uh, so not only to academic uh, applications. This goes to a general issue with um, chaos or opportunity with chaos of applying chaos metrics to commercial development um, outside of open source and you know, the boundary between open source development practices and commercial ones. Um, so uh, I want to propose a conversation in the metrics models group um, about applications of the DEI, uh, about metrics models for DEI. So is this something to bring up in the metrics model group, Lucas? Yes, that's right. Okay, gotcha. I was trying to put it right somewhere in the notes, wherever metrics models ended up. Gotcha. <laughs> Thank you. I have one more goal to add. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I 
we're, our list is getting very long. Uh, so <laughs> um, I think it kind of fits into the themes that we were. I was talking about before and others as well. Um, having some kind of feedback or like user feedback. I don't know if that's a survey. I don't know. Like we we did do a survey around our event, but that was pretty limited to the attendees. Um, and we have a sort of like the open office hours in QA, but I feel like we haven't made a considerable push to collect feedback from sort of our broader user community um, or maybe new chaos members or just like some, some way to kind of gauge what the experience is like for someone who's not new to the project for both a user and a contributor. Um, so I, I mean, we could do a survey, we could do some other kind of like feedback or brainstorming session, but I, I'd love to just get more of a perspective of what that experience is like. I mean, I'm no longer new to the project, so I don't have it anymore. And so I think it's, I'm now I'm curious to know what, what that's like for others. We, as part of the, it was from the DEI reflection, but we did actually, there was a, a preliminary survey developed that we have um, that we intend to, to, to put out. We waited because, do you remember the big Linux Foundation DEI survey? That came out like in October, November. We didn't do it just because of the alignment with that, and we wanted a little space. And so that could occur in 2022, and it might be something that um, we could ask not only the questions that we already have, but some additional questions that maybe get it at what you're getting, at, what you're talking about too, Sophia. Yeah, I mean, it could also just be like a state of metrics survey too. <laughs> it doesn't mm -hmm. have to be chaos related. Like, I think. That's gotcha. kind of thinking about the, the broader question of just how I gotcha. how chaos is supporting these things. So it could be either the experience of people coming to the chaos project or the experience of people that are trying to develop metric programs. And you could ask about the role of chaos and potential interest in that project as well as sort of like gotcha. what we're having. So I think anytime we're talking about a user feedback or experience survey, I'm, I'm, my head goes to all those angles. I know that's I gotcha. a bit broad, uh, but <laughs> that's where we are. Gotcha. Actually, it's because yesterday, Sophia and I did a podcast with folks at the Ocean Group. <laughs> I think that was kind of one of the questions, like how, I don't know if it came up in the podcast, but like how are, how is the work that we're doing help in chaos helping inform the work that you're thinking about in, in Ocean? So, okay, cool. All right. Uh, that was wonderful. Thank you, everybody. We didn't make it to Z, but that's okay. <laughs> we made it to M. <laughs> we don't even have an event in there, so that's another <laughs> Yeah, no, no events, no metrics, no nothing. So, well, this is great. I think this gives me something I can probably consolidate this down a little bit into kind of higher, higher order themes. So thank you, everybody. Matt, if it would be helpful, um, I can open an issue in the community repo or something for each bullet or each one of these items when you, after yeah. you consolidate. And that way, whoever wants to participate in that discussion can go to that That's issue. That's a good idea. Yeah, I love that idea. Yep, love it. Cool, thank you. Real quick, I had a question about Chaos Con Europe, uh, namely, or main, uh, mainly, uh, are we are we going to try to do that? I, I think FOSDEM is virtual this year. Are we going to try to do something? Uh, uh, yeah, I think yeah. So. Uh, that was me taking vacation and forgetting about things that I was supposed to be working on. Um, I can start a an asynchronous chain about that, um, given that we are not meeting again. Um, I think what we initially talked about the last meeting I was here, which I think is a few weeks ago at this point, was doing some sort of like chaos week around FOSDEM, um, where we would re-air some of our sessions that we had at ChaosCon and then do a more aggressive promotion around the meetings that we have that week, maybe try to do working group meetings all that week, where we kind of have like a an off schedule so that we have we can just kind of open it up the chaos community a bit more. So it's instead of having like sessions led by working groups, we have a promotion around our working group schedule and then host special versions of those meetings that are more open to or publish what we're gonna discuss or have more of a structured conversation so that it can be more open to newcomers to kind of just kind of come in and see what a meeting is like. Um, so essentially like, in my head, I was thinking these are the roundtables, but they're actually just we're leveraging the existing working group slots um, to have conversations with people that might be new to the community. So I'll put this in an email so that it's more 
structured as a, as a thought versus just like I'm rambling at you now. Um, but we were thinking the week after FOSDEM or is it the week before? That's what I don't remember. Uh, we I think said the, other, the other conversation before. that's happening in the ChaosCon channel um, is around doing something around open source EU in Dublin because they just yeah. announced the, the dates for that. So if we end up doing that, then maybe we don't do a separate virtual only one. The Dublin one, I think, isn't it in September, Don? Or it's yeah, fall, September it? September thirteenth through the sixteenth. So it would be either the okay. day or after, whatever their colo day okay. is. I mean, we could still do something around FOSDEM, but my my experience is that the people who attend these virtual events are so tired of doing virtual events that they don't necessarily want to do more more virtual meetings that they wouldn't do otherwise. So, I you know I think that if we if we wanted to do some kind of a um, promotion of some of the other content that we have, maybe we do that on a at a different time. It doesn't necessarily we could do it any time. Yeah, this is true. I mean, I'm, I'm not married to this idea. It was just one that we had. So I think and we, have, we have plenty of time to figure it out, too. So we're not yeah. big hurry. And I also kind of I'm, I'm with you on the sort of the, the fatigue of virtual events. And I, I don't know, I feel like people are really excited to not be going to virtual events anymore. And I know we all had the news over the weekend that we don't really know what's happening with the pandemic. So yeah. <laughs> You know, inventive viruses. All right. Well, we'll, we'll continue it over Slack if that's okay. That yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, for sure. All right, everybody. Thank you very much. Happy for holidays. All, okay, all right. Thanks, everybody. Take care. All right. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.